So in today's video, we are going to be discussing all things Stockport County and why they are currently my League 2 title favourites for the 2023-24 campaign. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 100 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. And Stockport County fans as well, get your thoughts down in the comment section down below how confident are you feeling about this upcoming campaign now in today's video we're going to be going through last season's playoff wars the new signings that they've made so far this season five key players in my opinion for this upcoming campaign and then also a potential starting 11 if everybody was to be fit at stockport county now i have done a little graphic which we'll come on to in a moment let me just reiterate this now some players might not be in the positions that they've played in last season i've tried to put them in their natural position as best as possible or if i wasn't too sure too much information about the player i've gone with what transfer mark has them down as so if it's wrong feel free to let me know down in the comment section down below but for the potential stein 11 i'm pretty sure i've got everybody in at the right position make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you are new as well and let's get into it if we start out then with last season stockport county's first season at back in the football league for a number of years really ended in a playoff final defeat on penalties against carlo united they finished fourth in the table after 46 matches they accumulated 22 wins 13 draws and 11 defeats scoring 65 goals and conceding at 37 that left them on a positive 28 goal difference their goal difference was the best in the league last season so it's clearly scoring goals was not really the issue they scored one of the most in the league last season but they did also concede I think it was the second least so it just was that poor start to the campaign that they had really last season if they didn't have such a poor start in them first 10 games they could have been really up there in my well not even in my opinion no, the facts are there if they didn't have such a poor start they were only four points off of finishing in that top three if we have a look then in a little bit more detail about their playoff campaign really last season their first leg was away at Salford City where they lost 1-0 then they went back to Edgeley Park won the game 2-1 on the day which meant it finished 2-2 on aggregate the game went to penalties where Stockport won 3-1 on penalties very rare these days that you see someone only score one in a penalty shootout but that meant Stockport can't progress through in to the playoff final and obviously they would be facing Carl United after they beat my team at Bradford City. In that playoff final then Stockport took the lead through a John Mellish own goal. It wasn't exactly the most appealing on the eye sort of goal but after that I thought Stockport were pretty decent for the rest of the game. Second half it was a bit all over the place as people were getting tired on that big pitch. It, what, they were starting to get leggy and the game was starting to open up a little bit. Carlisle equalised in the 84th minute through former Bradford City player Amari Patrick. He has since turned down the new contract with Carlisle, but obviously that meant the game went to extra time. It was still 1-1 after extra time, and the game went to penalty kicks. Carlisle ended up winning 5-4 on penalties. Carlisle scored all five penalties. I think I'm right in saying it was Ryan Rydell who missed the Stockport County penalty. It was either second or third penalty, but Carlisle's penalties were all really, really good, and unfortunately for a Stockport County point of view, it did mean that they will be playing League 2 football once again this campaign, but from what I saw of them last season especially after that first 10 games with who their manager is with how they've recruited I personally think as of right now they will be winning the league in my opinion. If we move on to Stockport County's new signings so far now according to Transfer Marked they have made the four signings Billy Chadwick from Hull City, Ibu Torre from Salford City, Jordan Smith from Nottingham Forest and Nick Powell from Stoke City. Starting out with Billy Chadwick then last season he was out on loan with Boston United where he did fairly well to be fair especially towards the end of that campaign he's not really played too much football in the AFL 23 years of age so they clearly see him as more of a long-term project I believe he signed a two or three year contract with the football club so that is a pretty decent pickup you know they need a bit more depth in that striking department especially with I think it's Jack Stratton is going to be out for the majority of the season with an ACL injury I think I don't know if these are in order or not but uh, no I think actually Ibu Torre was their first signing we'll move on to Torre next then this one for me is an absolutely unbelievable pickup he was the best left back in League 2 for the last couple of the seasons and to get him in on a free transfer I think that's a really really good piece of business can play left back left wing back can probably even do a job as a left sided centre back in a back three and I think that's where he's going to come in and play be that replacement for Chris Hussey and if they need to really go for a game I'm sure he could do a job overlapping as a left sided centre half and then you leave someone like a kill right and Fraser Horsewall at the back to just naturally go into like an inverted sort of system I think that could work really well because he's very good 
going forward. Last season, got nine assists for Salford City, creating 12 big chances, averaging 1.2 key passes per game. He kept 12 clean sheets, averaging two tackles and two clearances per game as well. He won 56% of his ground duels, 50% of his aerial duels, picked up seven yellow cards. I think this one for me is one of their best signings. I know Nick Powell's a very good signing, but Ibu Torre is going a little bit under the radar for me. I think this one is an absolutely incredible signing in my opinion. Jordan Smith also joined the club on a one-year contract, I do believe, from Nottingham Forest. According to Transfer Marks, anyway, it is a one-year contract. The 28-year-old hasn't really played too much senior football, to be honest with you. He's been the majority of his career, especially in recent years, as a backup goalkeeper at Nottingham Forest. He also, for some reason, had an appearance on Huddersfield Town's bench back in February when they played at home to Birmingham. So I don't really know what went on there. The last time that he really played, had a decent amount of football, was in that 17-18 season where he played twin, uh, 29 times. Apart from that, he hasn't really played too much football in recent years, so I'm not really too sure why they decided now is the right time to bring in Jordan Smith. Obviously, Ben Hinchcliffe is not getting any younger, really, although he's one of the best goalkeepers in the league last season, in my opinion. I think to provide a bit more competition, this one is a pretty smart signing. And obviously, their marquee signing so far is Nick Powell. Four goals in nine starts in the championship last season. He's come in on a three-year contract from Stoke City, 29 years of age, so not even 30 years of age yet. I think this one is an absolutely brilliant signing, in my opinion. 1.2 shots per game. Yes, he missed five big chances, but he had a 13% goal conversion rate, which for a midfielder is not bad whatsoever. Averaging a goal every 261 minutes in the championship is also very impressive. He averaged 0.5 key passes per game. Obviously, he was meant to be the next big thing at Manchester United, but that didn't quite materialise, and he has struggled with injury over the last couple of seasons. In the 21-22 campaign, he scored six goals and got one assist in 14 starts in the championship. And in that 20-21 campaign, he got 12 goals and three assists in 38 starts. So if you can keep him fit, he will comfortably be the best player in the league next season. Forget Paul Mullin, forget Andy Cook, forget Macaulay Longstaff, Nick Powell, with how good he is, he could genuinely, if he keeps himself fit, get 20 goals and 10 assists from midfield next season. I think this one is an absolutely incredible signing. But the problem is, can you keep him fit? Because he has struggled with injuries over the last couple of seasons but either way this for me is an absolutely incredible signing if we move on now then to Stockport County's five key players for this upcoming campaign in my opinion in at number five I have gone with Ibu Torre I don't really want to repeat myself but really quality player to get him in on free transfer as well at 28 years of age brings that experience and leadership in there as well I personally think that one is a really good pickup at number four I've got Fraser Horsfall leader goal scorer defensively absolutely brilliant again I think they've got him in on a free transfer from Northampton Town. Absolutely brilliant signing in my opinion. A real leader at the back. At number three, I've got Will Collar. Had a really, really good season last year in terms of goals and assists. For me, he's one of the first names on that team sheet and I think with him partnered with the player I've got in at number two, which is obviously Nick Powell. I think them two could be a really good central midfield partnership as you're two more number eights pushing on towards the attack and then you potentially have someone like Crowsdale as that anchor in that midfield. I think that midfield partnership could genuinely be one of the best in the league next season in my opinion. And number one, I've gone with Kyle Wooten. I think you saw when he was injured, Stockport really struggled going forward. Now it's not just his goal scoring presence, it's his actual physical presence and the way he holds the ball, brings others into play. I think he's so key to the way Stockport County play and when he's injured, he is a big loss for them. They don't really have a natural replacement for them. All the other strikers really are more second strikers. I know Oluwafe can kind of do that a little bit. Paddy Madden, again, had his injury problems, not really a hold up striker. Stretton, obviously, Obviously injured. I don't know too much about this Chadwick. I feel like I'm forgetting someone else. Miles um, Hippolyte as well. Naturally a winger, but has been playing at striker for Stockport County. And again, more of a second striker, someone who's got that legs rather than hold, that hold-up ability. And in my opinion, Kyle Wooten is their most important player. But you can't forget about players like Nick Powell, Will Collar, Fraser Horsfall, Annie Butore. And that's not even mentioning the majority of their squad, which is absolutely quality. Now we're going to get into the potential starting 11 for this upcoming campaign. Now, obviously, things could change and all that sort of stuff. Players could come in, players could leave the door. But I'm recording this at three minutes to four on the 24th of July. And as of right now, here is what my current Stockport County starting 11 would be for this upcoming 23-24 campaign. In goal, I've decided to stick with Ben Hinchcliffe. I thought he was brilliant last season. And while Jordan Smith might provide a bit of competition, I think Hinchcliffe deserves to at least start the season 
season, in my opinion. The back three is pretty familiar, to be fair. Horsefall on the right, a kill right in the middle. I know he's naturally a central midfielder, but he played centre back quite a lot last season for Stockport County. They don't really have too many options in there as of right now. And on the left, I've gone with Ibu Torre, replacing Chris Hussey from last campaign, who has since joined Walsall on a free transfer. At the two wing backs, then, again, very familiar with Kyle Noyle and Ryan Rydell. Maybe they could improve on Rydell, in my opinion, but I think he's a very steady player at this level. Kyle Noyle is absolutely brilliant as well. They need to get rid of him having that number three shirt, though. He has to be number two. Having a right back as number three is absolutely criminal. As that holding midfielder, then, I've gone with Ryan Crows. I think he's experienced in leadership in the centre of midfield and the way he can anchor the midfield. I think that is going to be very key. Like I mentioned earlier, Will Collar and Nick Powell in the centre of midfield. That's not even including players like Callum Camps or Anthony Sartovic. I know Sartovic hasn't exactly lit the world on fire recently at Stockport County, but Collar and Powell, as you start in midfield with Crosdale as the anchor, that is probably the best midfield in the league, in my opinion. And as your two strikers, I'm sure Stockport are very, very familiar with them in Kyle Wotton and Paddy Madden. Now, Madden can be rotated with someone like Anoa Lafe, someone like a Stretton when he's fit, Billy Chadwick or Miles Hippolyte, but Kyle Wotton, like I say, first name on a team sheet, in my opinion, and that squad is absolutely frightening. My team, Bradford City, actually plays Stockport in the third game of the season on Tuesday, the 15th of August, and if Stockport line up something like this, I don't think they will, because I think, obviously, they've got a couple injuries, but if if they did, I mean, we might as well pack his bags and go walk home straight away because that squad is far too good for us, to be honest. I'm going to leave it there, though, for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 100 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment then as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know where do you think Stockport County will finish in this 23-24 campaign. Like I say, I personally think they will win the league. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.